Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Globecast. I'm your host Sunlight and I'm really pleased to welcome today Anna Chatterjee, entrepreneur and COO and co-founder of 1 to 11, India's first social networking gaming ecosystem. Hi Anir, how are you? Hi, thanks. Thanks. It's, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for taking the time. So, can you tell us a bit about your entrepreneurial background and how it's led to your blockchain journey? So, basically, I'm an entrepreneur at uh, by profession and by I'm an educationist by demeanor. Okay, so it's it started with an engineering background and then followed with um, understanding business, doing business studies. But trust me, I've learned more business by doing it. So, uh, technically, one to eleven is my third venture. Uh, the other two ventures uh, were in the more in the education space, but the TG remains the same. So we are targeting the same age group of students, like from between the age of 18 to 28, in same in 1 to 11. So uh, it's it's been a quite interesting uh, journey, but uh, I, I don't hail from a background of business background. Like if I talk, I'm all my family members comes uh, like doctors, engineers, and those kind of people. So it was very difficult at, at some point of time uh, to to convince the parents about about getting into business. But eventually, after doing two successful exits and third coming up with uh, one to eleven, uh, now now they're convinced that I'm on the right track. Okay, were they supportive initially of your entrepreneurial journey? To be honest, they were not. I, as I told you, they were not from business background. So they were not supportive because I was doing a, a great work in my job as well. I was good in my work, but I felt that if I'm good, I should do it for my own. I should have worked for others. So that's how it's stated. But trust me, it's not out of passion. I saw more opportunity. So I'm a big believer of opportunity over passion. Uh, so I never chase passion. I always chase opportunity and opportunity always comes with a mask called problem. So wherever I, I saw a problem, I solved it and I turned it to a business. So congratulations on hitting over 1 million users in the first 10 months of launch of 1 to 11. Um, can you tell us a bit more about your day-to-day -day role as co-founder and COO of such a successful gaming ecosystem? So well, uh, 1 to 11 was started with a small project. Uh, but it, it, it scaled up so heavily in past, like to be precise, if I talk about the numbers, we've crossed over 1.5 million uh, transactional users on our platform, okay, T till date. Uh, our, our, we have, in terms of gross revenue, it has crossed more than $5 million. We're operationally positive. Our, our monthly active users have crossed 800K. Our daily active users have crossed 120K. So being, see, these, these like co-founder and all these tags are just tags for uh, outsider, but as a founder, you have to do everything. So, but yes, I'm blessed to have team members who have complementary skill sets. But if you ask me, what is my, my forte and my focus uh, being uh, in terms of my day-to-day -day, uh, like day-to-day -day work. So it start off with investors calls and the strategic partnerships calls uh, when, I, when I start my day. And then it followed with more sitting with the team and understanding what are the key sets of KPIs. So we have very kept it very simple. We measure three things. One is DAU, MAU and the gross revenue. That's it. So and that's been so that's that's growth is our North Star. So that's where my, my whole time goes in. And the remaining part of the day, primarily going into product. I'm more of a product guy uh, than so-called sales and marketing. So the, the, the good part is the team is comprised of 32 engineers and four co-founders. And more. We, we are more, are all the growth that you have talked about or we will be talking about is all organic. We have spent zero money on marketing. Okay. So it's less than a dollar to, to be precise. So that's all. I think wow. I, it answers your question, right? Yeah. Okay. So when you say you focus more on the product, are you talking about the APIs and the, the UX, UI type of... So basically, I'm not a coder. Okay. So I my, my CEO and my CTO are the coders, but I'm more like a product guy in terms of the UI, UX, and mm. understanding and how to figuring out triggers to ensure growth. So all the growth that in 1 to 11 has seen is primarily based on the various ways by which we, we build a community of 1.5 million gamers. It's more on virality. So what we did, like we believe in, uh, we, we uh, double down on rev, uh, like referral models, uh, loyalty programs, uh, and um, also uh, people can earn while they're sleeping. Uh, so we have created something called uh, network. Uh, you can earn through your network. So this is all uh, in, uh, like operational things. I call it uh, more process on innovation. So we have done a lot of process innovation. So majority of my time goes into the process innovation 
what are the tweaks that we can do in the product which will increase the stickiness of, of the product. Let's talk a bit more about the rewards. So you were saying, you know, how your players can earn while they sleep, essentially. Yeah. So um, can you actually um, tell us more about what play to earn is? So if, if I talk about play to earn, it's a very new, I would say it's just primarily you know, like three, four years, particularly coming up with, uh, with, with the intervention of blockchain, NFT tokens, it's, it's seriously see the synergy. So in our games, like, uh, you as a player, you can uh, earn by referring it. Okay, you can earn by uh, um, uh, through by playing the games definitely. And there are different categories of games. And the third is, as I talk about the network effect. So how how it happens is like let's suppose me and you are playing a casual game, for example, Rummy, right? So you bring your another friend on our platform, then three of them, then then whatever money she makes, you get a cut of it, right? So it's it's primarily that's the reason uh, our retention rate of our uh, users is almost thirty three percent, which is almost six times the market standard. So whoever lands in our platform, they stay for a longer period because we want to incentivize. And if I talk about play to earn, play to earn is 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 it's a flip model of pay and play, which all the giant companies like I don't want to name them. You know, minted money. They've minted money uh, by by taking your time, right? So if you if I talk about and I'm also a gamer, I also play games, but gaming has always seen as a taboo, right? You can never think gaming as as a source of income. So we are on a mission to our vision is to build world largest play to earn platform, and our mission is to provide sustainable source of income to gamers so that gaming can also be taken as a profession. So. Uh, I hope it answers like what is what is all about play to earn. Yes, yes, it does. Thank you. Can you talk a little bit more about advantages of one to eleven over traditional walled off data network video games? Okay, the first dif- uh, the first and the major difference is it's on blockchain. Okay. It's not in Web 2.0 and Web, it's on Web 3.0, right? Uh, the, what, there are a few games in our ecosystem. We are transitioning it, but all the new games have been built end to end on blockchain, which makes it more decentralized. Okay, and uh, that is one of the big difference in terms of technology. But more than technology, I'll tell you two major difference. First major difference is innovation. We are we are a more tech driven company. Uh, than uh, a more a content-driven company or a, a company which is based on more characters, building characters across the game. So uh, the why I'm, uh, why are we our go-to market strategy has always been innovation. Okay, uh, and from from the day one, that's one of the biggest differentiators. So you can imagine, like in past eleven months, we have launched seven games. Okay, and all games mm-hmm. are competing against billion-dollar companies. Like for example, our cricket is competing with Dream Eleven. It's one of the unicorn billion-dollar company. So it's it's uh, they are spending heavily on. I'm just giving an example. They're they're, they're spending heavily on marketing and everything, but we did it without any uh, any spend on uh, on marketing and most importantly by incentivizing gamers so that they should make more money so if i have to put an analogy they took 6 years to reach 1 million okay i'm a big admirer of the founders and what they are doing but i'm just giving an analogy they took 6 years to reach to over 1 million active users we did it in past 11 months okay and they were series a funded and they got the first mover advantage but when we last year when we started there were like um, the market was so crowded without innovation we couldn't have survived this far and the second is building community we have a very strong community so the differentiation is in our platform you can also chat with your gamers you can build a social so there's a social element which is one of the biggest differentiator uh, of, of our entire ecosystem like you can actually chat in hindi english and we're also launching uh, our, our various other languages like spanish mandarin so over here you can play you can earn, you can also learn because we're also launching a gamified quiz competitions programs, like right? where you can also learn uh, and also make new friends. So these are the four things that makes our ecosystem more different than other play to earn. Uh, and if I talk about other play to earn, if that's my, one of my favorite games are play to uh, are Axie Infinity, but unfortunately, and Axie Infinity has only one category of game, and they're they're good at that. They have only RPG games, but in our platform, we have RPG games, we have casual games like four player, three player games, and we also have fantasy games. So different category of products we have for different audiences. So that makes our makes our ecosystem and our tokens uh, 
more more in demand because we have one governance tokens across all the all all the games. So you just answered my um, next question. How do you differ from other blockchain based <laughs> games such as Axie yeah. Infinity? So thank you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it just seems like you really are inclusive and you're not just thinking of one avenue, right? Our strength is building products at a very quick instance of time, right? And we are the, so all, like as as I told you, like seven different products in different categories. So that's that's the uh, that that's the secret sauce of the of our growth. Okay, so if you ask me, have you done any like if if you if you have seen our Twitter in 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 uh in almost two months back, we were just having four hundred followers because we were unable to make other people understand that why you need Twitter when you can chat within our platform. Exactly. Okay, when you can make friends, but now we have more than fifteen k. It was not a big deal for us, but those people <laughs> are 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 from our own network. Okay, they they are the gamers, right? If I have one one point five million active users. I can divert them wherever I want, but they can also add value and we can also add value. Yeah, that's honestly very, very impressive. You are described as a serial entrepreneur on your website and uh, you've founded businesses involved in education, employment and real estate. <laughs> so uh, I'd love to know why now are you just uh, choosing to go into the world of blockchain gaming? I believe the future is here. Okay, many people are very skeptical about technology. So I've been a very like up to date with technologies and what what uh, what is going to happen in the future. And if I talk about Web 2.0 and Web 3.0, there is a huge difference. Okay, and being I don't like to call myself serial entrepreneur. I like to call myself. It's a cliche term. Like many people <laughs> use it, right? So for me, it's more. Uh, uh, experienced entrepreneur who have burned their hands okay so you've learned what not to do what has not worked for us okay and uh and with one to eleven not only me my entire co-founding team are serial entrepreneurs or experienced entrepreneurs okay where we have built billion dollar not billion dollar valued company but more than i would say impact that we made like in, in my past company called buddy for study okay we have impacted millions of students like 45 million students have been impacted through our scholarship program so where I believe the two way you can change the society. One is through education and second is by creating employment. Okay. And why I'm talking about uh, one to 11 now, because there are three industries are, are very close on disruption uh, with, the, with, the, uh, with the intervention of blockchain and cryptocurrency. The first industry is the fin FinTech, right? Uh, you have seen various banks has been uh, uh, has has been impacted, not impacted, impacted in a good way. Second is real estate, okay, because when you bring in blockchain, there is uh, this utmost transparency. And the third is gaming, and with gaming, being a gamer, okay, I've I've been a gamer, I've played games, and I I I believe that by through games we can create employment uh, of 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 someone who is sitting in LATAM or. Philippines or Vietnam, so we really so with this I, uh, and with the with the latest technology where uh, where it will be more decentralized and the governance will not be with us it will be with the community so that really and that was really appealing to me and honestly like it it all started with numbers okay with the numbers speaks louder than words so when we started we never thought it would go so big at a very short period of time so. That's it. So we are just moving with the flow and the flow is towards Web 3.0. As the concept of, you know, using NFTs in video gaming, such a new and innovative idea, what makes the concept of owning them so valuable, uh, especially in 1 to 11? So there are two parts, right? One is what is valuable and why especially to 1 to 11. So NFTs are something which I call non-fungible tokens, right? Uh, and what is what are tokens? If I have to explain my mom, I explain it in a very simple way. I said, like tokens are like uh, you you own your own country and you're launching your own currency, right? And you need to be very sure uh, what what will be the total volume of currency that you want to produce because you are also acting like the reserve bank of that particular country, right? So tokens are something like in our platform there are two tokens. One is a uh, one governance token and one is uh, the gaming token, which are primarily NFTs, okay, which we call it non fungible. So non fungible token are the most important thing because these what I call digital assets or the world know know it as a digital assets, right? So just like in in in, in your in the past the gold was a uh, gold was an asset. It's still an asset, right? Real estate is an asset. In the same way, uh, in Web 3.0, the people will have their ownership on digital assets because like the NFTs uh, are 
are the new Rolex. Okay, um, and that's 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 what I believe. All the luxury, why, and everything trickles from top. Like you see now, all the rich people are buying all this, uh, all this uh, like stupid things with people say. Uh, but slowly, slowly, yes, there are a lot of stupid things that are happening in the segment. But slowly, slowly, the market is getting more mature, and that's where uh, one to eleven owning a NFT in one to eleven with an ecosystem which is growing on a day to day basis, it actually increases the value of the token, right? So it's it's more about uh, the more people are in that country, more transaction is happening in that country will actually country or the game or per se, right? Which actually increase the value of it. So uh, and and the interesting part is you can not only make money by owning that uh, asset, but also you can rent it out, right? Suppose you're crossing from one level of in in the in the gaming ecosystem to another level, and you have cleared that you you own that uh, NFT. Then you can also rent it to your like how Axie is doing it. It's doing one of the best things, right? So what we are good at, we have copied, or we are cop. We, we I love to sell that that we we like to take the best practices in the market. We don't want to reinvent the wheel, but wherever we got to see the improvisation can be done. That's where we did it. So we we really like what uh, Axie Infinity is doing, and the same concept we bring it into our platform. But it is across several games. That's one of the biggest differentiators. Yeah, so you were talking about Web3 and of course like a big development within that is the push towards the meta space and, you know, a tangible use for NFTs. Do you see this as a threat to 111 who are already using NFTs as a reward scheme for your players? I see if I talk about a uh, threat, I don't see anyone, anything as a threat. At the end of the day, you are taking care of your users. You're listening to your customers rather than listening to what is happening in the news or what is do- what our competitors are doing, right? Uh, this, that's, I'll, I'll, say, I'll answer this not in a technical way, more uh, in a way of as an entrepreneur. Like it's more about mindset, right? When we started, like everybody we met, they all said, you guys are going to fail. And this is and when people say you are you're gonna fail and you're crazy, and I I like it because I know because they said like people are spending almost ten dollars to to get a customer okay ten dollar fifteen dollars right in in the peak time, and we said okay we won't spend any money let's build a great product and let's product speaks for itself and we have always and always incentivizes the people or the users who were the first buyer in the same way what we are doing for our raising our funds like so that's how we treat. It. So I don't see generally a threat. And most importantly, why people, those people are more worried about the threats when they don't know what is the token usability. I see a very crystal clear picture of our token usability. And people are craving for our tokens because these tokens uh, will give us more globally, more, more uh, operationally more easier. Because now people are from Russia, uh, Germany, various part of the world, they are transacting through fiat. Okay, uh, and there is a lot of complications involved. But when you do it to to tokens, mm-hmm. it actually eased out a lot of the things, and it reduces number of steps, several number of steps. So, so for me, I, I don't think see, it's it's a it's a threat for us. I take it as a challenge, and I love it. How very entrepreneurial of you! <laughs> it's great to see that you you know take any uh, you see more opportunities right than than the threats. Yeah, I always tell my team that you you need not to be intelligent you need to be smart because intelligent people they, the intelligent people they paralyze themselves by over analyzing it right they will find 100 reasons why they can't do it they won't find a single reason why they can right so so that's 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 what my thought is so let's talk about india for a second so that's where you know it all started and so that in 2018 there was an rbi reserve bank of india ban on all financial institutions dealing in cryptocurrency but then that was lifted in 2020 so i'd love to know a bit about what are your sentiments on the crypto sphere in india see what i i i always believe that when new technology comes in it's very uncomfortable to various people, right? And as far as India is concerned, I, I can share you some reports, as some numbers. Like India is currently one of the biggest wallet holders in the cryptocurrency space. So we have our global office in Singapore, uh, but our entire team is based out of India, 
right? Engineering team is based out of India. So what I'm trying to say is there are a lot of three uh, unicorns, uh, crypto unicorns has come like, you might have heard about Wazirx, you might have heard about like uh, Polygon. You might have uh, like Polygon, you, uh, Polygon is a pretty, uh, it's, it's one of the chains that we are using and they're also from India. So Indian ecosystem is, is at the forefront in terms of Web 3.0. Uh, and and the government is also very open in terms of accepting that. And slowly, slowly, we are already seeing the transaction in the policies. But as you correctly said, now it has been lifted, and uh, like people are shelling, uh, are making money uh, out of the out of this this form of assets. So I'm very optimistic about everything, not only about policies. So uh, <laughs> so you can't stop. You cannot stop good things, right? It will exactly. happen no matter what. At the end of the day, like all the big companies who have all our data, uh, they are in a fear that we will lose the data because that's that's what blockchain is all about, right? It decentralizes everything, right? And um, I'm glad now people, now the, the community itself is have so matured. Like I, I totally agree what happened in 2017 if you're following the market. So there was a hype and there was a strong dip there was a long beer market, uh, but I am very optimistic, like at least this time, even if it, something happens, uh, but it will be good. Maybe from some market predictions need to go, need to happen, it will happen. Uh, but uh, not only in India, but overall, it's, it's a good perspective. That's great. Right. So you said um, earlier on that the social networking side of um, 1 to 11, so you can talk in Hindi and English in, uh, and you're developing more, you know, uh, language bases for that. Can you tell me a bit more about, you know, how 1 to 11 is expanding into the global community? See, honestly, we have already expanded. Like uh, <laughs> we have users from across the globe. And as an Indian, I, I'm very happy to say that every sixth person on the planet is an Indian. That's the, that's the size of, of Indians, right? And every fourth person is a Chinese, right? So uh, we were fortunate enough, like, yes. So all the users, currently all our games are being played through Indian phone numbers. If you want to play it, you need to have an Indian phone number. There was two reasons why we still not open it for international numbers. First, we wanted to test the hypothesis. And the third is, uh, before scaling it up, we want to be dead sure because when you open the gates for international phone numbers, then the cost of the servers and a lot of other things goes up, right? There are a lot of other challenges comes into the picture. So we wanted to have first uh, test our hypothesis pretty well. Then we want to scale it up. But if, if you talk about what are our target geography, we're targeting all the developing countries. Like uh, you can say that if, if you, who will play the game? The people who will play the game are actually people who are uh, from developing countries, even spending an hour, like you're in London, I'm in London, right? So oh, if you ask someone over here that will you spend an hour to get a dollar, they would say no, right? There's a buzz off, right? <laughs> but if you go to Philippines or India, can you spend an hour to get a 60? Like who, who does not have much skill, but their labor could be converted uh, into into. Uh, what you call NFTs or tokens, right? At the same point of time, for the labor, they will be rewarded with money. Like, so in, in our platform also, like if I talk about in our platform, uh, like in India, uh, all our gamers are from tier two and tier three cities, okay? Not from the metropolitan cities, okay? So tier two, tier three cities always find ways how to make money online, right? So that's where, so, so LATAM, uh, yeah, Southeast Asia, Africa, uh, and 80 percent of the traffic will always and always be focused on developing countries and like 20 percent you can say people from london uk so what happens is like actually if you see the play to earn ecosystem the games are being played by these kind of communities uh, from from developing nations but once they have those tokens they uh, so they are being purchased by the people who are living in wealthy nations right so in, in a way it's a win-win situation for people over uh, because they don't want to spend like almost 24 hours to get an axie or 1 to 11 token but that can be done by someone uh, from here so i've taken a look on your website and you are described as an educationist by demeanor so do you have any advice for any budding entrepreneurs that may be watching right now uh, yeah, so I, I, why I call educationalists because I believe at the end of the day, I, I believe to make people aware, right? 
what's uh, I, I write about new technologies, uh, like even share my experiences. So I don't want other people should go uh, or, or should face the same challenges that I have faced uh, through through lectures. I also give frequent lectures to a lot of uh, good institutions in India, like IITs, IIMs, uh, other other colleges. So what I'm trying to say is, uh, for any budding entrepreneur, uh, I would say before chasing passion, you should chase opportunity. Okay, I'm not a passionate entrepreneur, but I uh, but I've turned out to be a passionate person because I'm I'm trying to chase opportunity. And if if you just say okay, Anir, tell me how to find an opportunity, then I would say that figure out list down the problems that you are currently facing. So I always believe in scratching my own itch. Like all my previous companies are based on the problems that I faced. Like if it's real estate, I was duped by a broker. Okay. And uh, that motivated me. Oh, being a so educated guy, and uh, and and also a business person. Also, I am basically I'm also a civil engineer, right? So having all these things, I was duped by someone. So let's solve this problem. So I solved this uh, through through my venture. And when you're actually solving a problem by having some value, adding some significant amount of value, then you make money. That's that's how you things work. So same in one to eleven, the hypothesis is to provide maximum benefit like uh if, if, if i have to talk uh, if i have to tell this to any budding entrepreneur you should be laser focused on your customers not on your competitors a you should be more um, you, you should be more optimistic and look for opportunity not as passion okay because passion goes out of the window if you if you don't progress okay so I, i've seen many passionate people fail miserably that's my thought it's very contradictory to many people uh, but uh, you need to have, along with passion, you need to more seek opportunity and very action oriented. Execution is the key. There are hundreds of people in every every place, right? Uh, every next person having an idea, billion dollar idea, right? Every next person is supposed to create an Uber. But why people have created that? Because they execute it. So execution, everything, whatever I said, will, will go out of the picture if you don't execute. Uh, so execution uh, would be the most important thing. Thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you. It was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to know more about Enium and 1 to 11, please follow the links below. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Until next time. Bye.